I had grand plans today to do a small prescribed burn, but I think the weather might be in the process of sabotaging it. This area has some good healthy trees, and the understory has a thick layer of duff, small branches, some slash, and all this brush that is starting to establish. One of the easiest, and more importantly, the most fun way to clean a place like this up is to burn it. Do a prescribed burn, controlled burn, broadcast burn, whatever you want to call it. My preferred time to do a burn like this is in the spring, right after we've had a few days of warm, dry weather that dries everything out, and right before there's a forecast for rain. That way the fire can creep around, do its thing, then the rain comes and keeps it from spreading where you don't want it to go. I also prefer to do it in places like this where you have a thick layer of pine needles. Pine needles dry quickly and they burn just after a few days of dry weather. But all around the area, you don't have pine needles. All around the area, the duff layer is still too wet to spread a fire. This time of year, before we get into wildfire season here, the only places that are going to burn are under these pine trees where the needles are. Everywhere else is still too wet to burn. Even here may be too wet to burn because the rain came earlier than expected. My plan was to get out here this morning, get the fire started, then the rains would come late morning, early afternoon. But the rain decided to come early this morning. Just as I get this fire started, it's starting to get wet. But we have some big healthy pine and cedar trees here with healthy canopies. Under the drip line of the trees, everything's still dry. So maybe we can get this to burn before it gets wet. Normal people would typically use a drip torch or a propane torch to get a broadcast burn going. But I don't even know what it's like to be a normal people. Since we have some wet conditions, I'm starting out with a pile burn and we'll see if we can get it to spread a little bit. Might have to help it out some. With this fire so intense at the moment, it's not real likely to spread away from the fire, at least not very fast, because as we know, heated air rises it's creating a wind that's blowing toward the fire. So the fire would have to go away from that wind. Once it dies down, then it'll be a different story. But for now, we'll help it out a little bit. Get a shovel full of coals. I only do this with my old wore out shovels. Don't want to ruin the good temper on my good shovels. This way it'll use the wind from the fire to blow the fire toward the fire. Now that the intensity of the main fire has died down, it's starting to spread a little. These bigger trees are insulated by their thick bark. They're adapted to fire, the fire won't hurt them. But what it will do is it'll eliminate some of the competition. It'll add ashes to the ground that provide nutrients. There was a concentration of slash over here, but it was too wet to spread over there. 
So I'm just moving the sticks from over here, over here to get this spot to burn. This is where the original big fire was. It didn't burn here long enough to scorch the roots underneath. It's not even burning down to mineral soil. It's just burning down to where the wet duff layer is. If you're really motivated to get a spot to burn that's too wet to burn, you can push the fire along. A longer hoe or pulling instrument would actually be better for this, but I didn't bring one. It's just a lot of work doing it that way. I'm not real motivated to take this one very far today. And if you want the greenery to still come back here instead of having a dead black spot, you can rake the coals out so you don't bake the ground and the roots underneath. After it's burned a little bit in one spot, just pull it forward a little bit more. burn the next spot. But that's a lot of work. That's about as far as I want to take that. Since we are working with fire, I should give my usual fire disclaimer. Fire is hot. Fire can burn you. Fire can cause severe injury or death. Fire can burn other people. Fire can burn things that you don't want it to burn. Fire can get away from you and cause wildfires, which can be destructive. Before ever using fire, only consult a real certified fire expert, not just some guy on YouTube, especially one who apparently can't even figure out which direction heat goes. I said I wasn't gonna keep pushing this around, but what else do we have to do on a rainy spring day? Silly disclaimer aside, you do have to be careful with fire. I'm doing this today because we have a forecast of wet weather over the next week. Not just some spurt of rain that may or may not show up, but a forecast of wet weather over the next week. All around this fire, we have green vegetation that's wet. Not much of a duff layer. You have to be careful for things like this. It's a spot where the fire wouldn't really spread much, but it is still smoldering in the thick duff. Likely a few days of wet weather will extinguish all this, but this is something to keep an eye on because it could just keep slowly smoldering until we have dry weather. Then it could take off and spread. Or a place like this where we are burning into an old stump. These are things we'll have to keep an eye on over the next few days. Notice if there's smoke coming out of the ground, heat, something like this can create what's called a sleeper fire, where it burns underground for sometimes weeks or months, then it can start a fire later in the year when things are dry. Right now, just after our winter wet season, everything under the ground is really wet, so there's less of a chance of things burning underground, but especially if you get a pitchy stump, they can burn down to the ground any kind of weather. This looks like an old pine stump, prime candidate for that. So we'll have to keep an eye on this spot. Back to our pushing around fire. The smaller it gets, the easier it is to push it around. If we keep pushing it through, it'll take out this vegetation. It's a little bit like giving all this vegetation a haircut. Cut off the bushy tops and let it sprout back. With new sprouts that the deer will enjoy chewing on.
Historically, fires used to burn like this through the forest. Historically, a lot of the acres that would burn would burn during the low intensity times of the year, like fall, spring. Now on the west coast, the only fires that are allowed to burn are the ones in the intense time of the year, August, September, when it's really hot and dry. We put out the fires during the spring that could be beneficial, but we let the intense fires go during the summer. Not intentionally, just because it's easier to put out the ones in the spring, the ones in the summer are hard to put out. Now we have a higher percentage of acreage that gets burned intensely instead of the way it used to be, acreage that burned with low intensity like these. This was a lousy burn. I wanted to burn off this whole area. All it took was a few light showers to make it too wet to burn. The only place we were able to burn, at least the only place where it would creep around by itself, was inside the drip line of the cedar. The rest of this I had to push it along myself. The rest of it was just too wet to go very far. Some of them are still smoldering. They might creep around a little bit today. But with more rain on the way, I don't think they'll do much. I'll be close by for the rest of the day. If anything interesting happens, I'll bring you down and we'll deal with the interesting thing that happens. Otherwise, if the video ends right now, nothing interesting happened.